Hey guys, and welcome back to 5-9 Gaming. It's your boy, the Masked Ningen, and I am here today with DBZ Blaze to talk about the legendary GT Goku event. Uh, it came to both versions of the game on the 8th of May. It is essentially a harder version of the original uh, legendary Goku event. It does follow the same sort of blueprint, but obviously it is GT themed to fit in line with this celebration. Uh, you fight against the base GT Goku in his like childlike form, and you go through all of his Super Saiyan forms, the Golden Great Ape, Super Saiyan 4, and then finally full power Super Saiyan 4. And uh, I think it's fairly safe to say that this is probably the hardest event in the game currently. So uh, I'll throw it over to our boy Blaze here. How did you find this event when it first dropped? Because uh, you're a global main as well. So how was it for you? Yep. I'm very good. And also, thank you for having me as well again on 5.9 Gaming. Um, my experience with the GT Legendary Goku event, um, I think it's well done. Uh, I think it's definitely well done. They did take consideration that um, from the old one, the old Legendary Goku event, the key to it was just stacking defense. But now they, they put some tricks into the event. But I would say what made the event really hard is definitely the missions. The missions is what makes the mm. event very difficult. Because you can bring a Kamehameha yeah, well, team and just completely destroy, but when it comes to the missions, it's <laughs> different. It's just completely different. Exactly. The missions, I think, are definitely what adds that extra level of challenge, which obviously we are going to go over each of those category missions in this video, give you guys a little bit of an idea on some units that will be good to use. We're not going to go into like a huge detail breaking down every single team because video would be super long but we will go over some key units but as blaze was saying if you're if it's your first time challenging the event and you're not really too fussed about doing one of the missions you just want to play through uh, various different category teams will be capable of beating the event um, and like we we're saying in just like the previous event units that can stack defense are going to be very very useful in this event and obviously any units that have any sort of built-in damage reduction but they did add a little bit of a twist so defense stacking is not necessarily the auto win like hack that it used to be because you know back in the old lge it wasn't long before you were seeing people doing full free-to-play teams uh even like full mono tech teams just because defense stacking was so powerful but of course now uh goku has the ab ability to lower your defense so uh, you've got some of the details there haven't you blaze yes uh that ability is very annoying especially the further you go uh, so if you guys are not familiar yet, there is going to be three stages where Goku actually lowers your defense, where it becomes very tricky for you to lower your, I mean, to increase your defense, to stack your defense. Obviously, the first stage, um, if you get caught with the wrong physical unit, if you get supered by Goku because he has STR, he does do a lot of damage and he will lower your defense for three turns. Uh, the next phase is going to be the Super Saiyan 2, where he's going to be AGL. And then the last phase is Super Saiyan 3. Now, Super Saiyan 3 is tricky as well because he does hit quite hard on his normal attacks. But again, that super attack will also lower your defense. And you'll be jumping right into the Great Ozaru or the Golden Ozaru. And that, with your defense being lowered, is a very big chance because he does hit very, very hard. Mm. Yeah, it was one thing I noticed very early on when trying out some of the teams is, uh, and this is where the difference really stands out from the previous version of the Legendary Goku event, is obviously free-to-play units or slightly weaker summonable units that do have that defensive stacking ability. Some of them don't stack mm -hmm. up quite as quickly as some of the summonable units or units that just get that bigger increase on super attack. And so if you get hit with a super by one of these phases that lowers defense, you you can see units that have built up even like up to like 200k defense you get hit with that super attack and you're still going to take quite a lot of damage and then of course by lowering your defense all the subsequent attacks if you're getting hit again on the same unit you're obviously going to take more damage so that is something that you definitely have to bear in mind so um, one of the big things as well to consider is definitely the item management. That's always something in these harder events that is worth considering. I feel like it's one of the big, big things that always comes down to uh, Super Battle Road as well. Is just how you use your items. Obviously, like the previous Legendary Goku event, you can only use two items instead of the full four. So, uh, what were the items that you were finding yourself bringing, or did you, did you just bring the same ones for every single team, or did you mix it up a little bit? What were what were the items you were finding yourself using for this event? 
Uh, it all depends on the teams, right? Because certain uh -huh. teams have certain advantages. So, for example, power absorption. Uh, I actually only brought damage reduction items, right? Like a Whis, Icarus, or even a Princess Snake. But normally, I'd probably bring an Icarus and a Whis. Uh, uh -huh. Reason why is because power absorption, right? Uh, the boos, if you are being a full boo team and you can bring AGL Super 17, uh, the healing is very consistent. Um, and you can use that to your advantage, especially with the transformation. If you do transform with the LR um, Buhan or boo tanks, whatever you want to call them, uh, they get an extra healing as well when they transform. So it's like a double heal on the same turn. So you can yeah, definitely exactly. use it to your advantage. Um, but mm -hmm. as for general, I was probably using a Whis and an Android 8. I think Android 8 was very crucial. Um, because Goku mm. could dodge like multiple times, so he does extend the fight, and that extra defense could probably save you um, yep. from a super attack or normal attack, right? Yeah, definitely. That's the thing. That's where item management is really important in this because because Goku can dodge. Are there he can dodge earlier on, but it's a much lower chance. But it's kind of like the original legendary Goku event in the sense that if you are just barely scraping to get to that final stage, if you get you know bad luck with the rng goku could dodge a whole bunch of your attacks and obviously like you said that extends the length of the fight overall and then chances are you're going to run out of your items to give you that extra defense uh, before the fight ends so it's definitely something worth considering normally what i try and do or at least i tried to do for the missions um, but even again now if i'm just running a different category team i try to not use a single item until i've at least gotten to the uh, golden azaru stage because obviously he does hit incredibly hard uh, even with a defensive stacking unit if he hits a physical unit with a super attack and you don't have an item active yeah that is gg i think i took i was doing a run recently with the power absorption team and the physical boot tanks was at like 450k defense and he still just gets one shot by the uh azaru super attack yep so <laughs> you definitely uh want to make sure you're using your items effectively one thing that's worth noting as well is you can only lower goku's attack in the first fight against the str base form goku so any items like the nurse chi chi or the mouse item both items that are super useful in something like super battle road uh they will have no effect in this event after the first stage so make sure you don't uh accidentally bring one of those items because uh they will not work unfortunately so mm -hmm. and that's a good point actually because i was gonna say that um in the stage of goku only from stages from one to five can you lower his defense from stage six to seven uh -huh. he's basically invulnerable so if you're gonna bring units like jiren or let's say on the jp side if you have lr goku and frieza um unfortunately when you get to stage six and seven you're not gonna get the full passive because goku is invincible so you do have to take note of that as well because they get their full passive when the opponents attack down or defense down so uh -huh. um if you are planning to use them because again we do have universe seven as part of the mission but you do have to watch out for that yep. those are points that i make yeah so it's definitely important so when it comes to team building uh, we will go into the categories for the missions in a moment here but when it comes to team building in general regardless of what categories that you want to bring those are some of the important things that you need to think about so if you have a unit who in order to get their full potential it revolves around the enemy being attack lowered or defense lowered obviously those units are not going to be as effective um also units who are not very good defensively outside of the fact that they have a built-in chance to dodge obviously mm -hmm. those units you need to be careful with because once you get to that final stage against the tech full power super saiyan 4 goku uh, you have your dodge disabled so there are certain units because i think we'll probably talk about reps of universe 7 first so there are certain units that do have a lot of dodge built around their passive but can still be very good once you get to that final stage but there are certainly units that you might bring in other events that you basically are just relying on their dodge in order to keep them alive. And so obviously those are units that you definitely can't bring for uh, this particular event. So obviously this is end game content. It's not expected for if you're a fairly new player, it's potentially likely that not only can you not do the missions, you might not be able to beat the event at all. But the key is knowing your units, knowing what they do having these units that can either stack defense or have damage reduction are all going to be 
super super useful so when it comes down to the guide for actually beating the specific missions we'll start off with reps of universe 7 obviously this is the big one that people were talking about because this one is very different uh, depending on whether you're on jp or global so <laughs> Both of us here on Global, uh, definitely the version that it was going to be the most difficult for. So what were your experiences with the Reps of Universe 7 mission on Global? <laughs> uh, my experience was very rough. I think for me, it was the hardest <laughs> one to do just because it's very limited. So if you definitely are a new player, uh, this is going to be very difficult for you just because there's not that many options and there's actually no units you can actually summon for right now for Universe 7. Um, I think the key to, I mean, I think the one unit you should have, actually there's two units I think you need to have in order to be the on global, is definitely going to be UI Goku and also Frieza. Um, mm -hmm. Frieza has very good, um, I mean, you just stack defense, so you just, you're basically your only defense, I want to say, in a way. Yep. Uh, and then UI Goku is actually very clutch uh, with his dodging, even though it's a 50% when, uh, I think, what, seven turns pass by? Mm -hmm. um, he has a 50% chance. It's still very good because... Only the last phase you have to worry about not, I mean, it's only the last phase where you're not able to dodge, but the rest of the stages you can still dodge. Yep. What do you think about Universe 7? Yeah, so I agree. It was definitely one of the hardest ones. Um, UI Goku is the kind of unit that we were talking about uh, a moment ago where whilst he does revolve around dodging, he obviously builds up his passive with each dodge that he does. So what you want to do, of course, is make sure you get as many dodges as possible as early as you can. And then once you get to that final stage where you're no longer able to dodge with his passive fully maxed out, he is still able to tank reasonably well. Um, he's still going to take damage from super attacks, obviously. Uh, so again, it falls back to being good with your item management. But yeah, fortunately, mm -hmm. he's not the kind of unit that only relies on dodging. And then if you don't dodge, he just gets killed. Because as long as you can get that passive built up, uh, he is very good. But yeah, definitely much more restrictive on global. I mean, once the anniversary hits, your potential team for this is going to completely change. So if you're somebody who is struggling with this mission right now on global, um, I would honestly just advise waiting for the anniversary. There's no rush to get all the missions beaten straight away. And this one is going to mm -hmm. be much much easier but i mean if you're up for the challenge it is doable another unit i think that stands out to me as being really really good was the um lr goku and vegeta because uh, they do greatly Ooh, raise their yes. defense on super attack and as long as you can pick up some rainbows for them uh, rainbow orbs they get the guaranteed additional normal attacks the more of those you do the more likely you are to then get the additional from their hidden potential system so if you can double super with them um, even against the final stage against full power Goku, I think mine has two dupes and they were tanking normal attacks for double digits. So that was actually very impressed with how good they were. Um, and then, yeah, the Angel Freezer, obviously he's a unit that infinitely stacks defense. So you want to try and get him as early as possible to just be super attacking as much as possible. Uh, it's one thing to bear in mind, not just for this team, but just for any of the stages in general, any of the missions or any teams you choose to bring for fun. When you have units that stack defense, you obviously want to make sure that they are super attacking as much as possible. So if you get into a rotation where the enemy is one hit away from death, you want to make sure you're putting that infinite stacking unit in slot one to super attack so they can get that extra stack. Uh, even if potentially exactly. it might you might take a risk like sometimes I would take a risk on even if there was a unit on that rotation who would probably tank the hit slightly better I would put Frieza in slot one because you want to get that extra stack so there's uh, mm -hmm. definitely that element to it but I think the big thing for global is the fact that you're very restricted on your choice of leader because um, you have to use Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku or the Goku and Frieza, who obviously on Global do not have their EZA. So who did you use for your leader and your friend leader? So for my run, I actually got it done with Jiren because uh, the mission always says that you need to have seven, or sorry, six characters from uh, Universe 6. I'm sorry, Universe uh -huh. 7, sorry. But the friend does not count. So I kind of cheesed it away with Jiren. Um, now you could either use LR Goku and Frieza as your leader, or you can use Kaioken Goku. I decided to use the LR Goku and Frieza just because it actually gave me more HP at the end instead uh -huh. with the Kaioken Goku. So I decided to use the LR Goku and Frieza. But of course, you could use Kaioken Goku. Uh, again, Jiren is obviously a very good unit. Uh, as of right now, I would say he's better than Goku and Frieza because 
Uh, we have a lot of units that do lower defense in the event. And because of that, Jiren becomes super effective in the in the run. Uh, he also has very good defense as well. And he shares shock and speed with Frieza. So it's really, I mean, I think Jiren's a very good unit. Mm -hmm. uh, because he's also a leader for Universal Survival Saga, right? So yep. um, that was my experience. Uh, I think Jiren was much more consistent. Um, the only real issue I had with running Universe 7 was the of uh, uh, the uh, Zaru phase because we have Frieza and we have um, we have actually three physical units. Well, in my team yep. built, I had seventeen, I had LR Goku and Vegeta, and I had Frieza. So we had three physical units. So that stage was very difficult um, when mm. doing Universe Seven. But I yeah. use I use LR Goku and Frieza for the leader. How about you? Yeah, I think I used, um, I did try a run or two with Jiren, but I think the only friends that I could find were like one dupe. So he was, uh, it was one of those things where I think I just took an unfortunate super attack at the wrong time. But I think I ended up using a mix. I was using one Goku and Vegeta, uh, sorry, Goku and Frieza, and then Blue Kaioken. Because Blue Kaioken Goku, one of the very effective strategies is to try and save up and use the Spirit Bomb in that final stage to do a lot of damage. But of course, being the living meme that he is, uh, Blue Kaiken Goku is a little bit of a liability at times. Um, and I definitely didn't want to have two on the team. Uh, and obviously pre-EZA, Goku and Frieza, they're still good, of course, but they're not crazy good. Um, and you definitely want to be careful with them in the Int Super Saiyan 4 phase. So I didn't really want to have two of either of them. So I just bought one of each as the two leads and then filled out the team. But yeah, 17, I think, is definitely another top pick. Because whilst you do need to be careful in the STR phase, the fact that he provides key and defense to everybody is very useful. Because obviously a little bit of extra defense is nice and then the key is good if you are bringing uh, multiple LRs on the team as well. So um, a couple of units that I would say like you definitely want to steer away from that are good in other events but not so much here. I saw some people talking about when the event first dropped. Uh, the Skinny Boo is super super good in something like super battle road because he has a built-in chance to dodge he has a built-in chance to stun and he has really high stats but only for is it the first what eight turns or something so in a long form event like this once that runs out um he's just going to get absolutely destroyed um unfortunately the only god goku in this category is the agl one who uh until he gets an easy a is not particularly good either um, even down to units like Int Golden Freezer, who obviously would be the best link partner for the physical Freezer, um, doesn't quite hold his own these days in the harder content. So, I mean, you can see here on the screen, if we scroll up to the actual LRs, all of these units that come out during the six year anniversary are going to make such a big difference. And then, of course, Int UI gets his easy A, Goku and Freezer get an easy A, we get this Gohan and Piccolo and the Gohan and Freezer. So, if this is the one that you're really struggling with, um, I would probably say wait until the six year anniversary, and then it will become a lot more manageable. Okay, so next up for the missions, we have Battle of Wits. So, this one is. Uh, I found this one pretty straightforward. I think this was the first one that I did because. This one, very powerful category. Obviously, the STR, Goku, and Vegeta are an incredibly powerful unit. And then this category features, like, all the Vegitos. A um, lot of top-tier characters on this uh, particular category. So what was the uh, what was the team build that you ran looking like? Uh, it's just basically almost a full Vegito team. I think Vegito is just <laughs> very powerful. Um, yeah, L I mean, LR, Goku, and Vegeta, the STR unit, are just a fantastic unit. They age very well. And you could get away with their active skill as well. As you guys know, um, True loves to do his videos where he does use the active skill and see if there's a super attack. And there's no super attack, then he's probably going to restart the app, which is a pretty good strategy. It's not really cheating, but you know, it's a good strategy. <laughs> <laughs> and also you get that free heal as well. Um, easy A, physical Vegito, very good, obviously. Uh, might struggle with the Zaru stage, but if you are going to use like a Whis item, he's completely fine. Uh, really, it's definitely a very easy category. Uh, a good stacking unit is probably going to be Trunks. All right, so he does stack. So if you guys are low on some units, you can definitely use Trunks because he's a, he is a stacking unit as well. Uh, what did you use in your team? Yeah, I, again, I used pretty much the same thing. It was pretty much a full Vegito team. Um, I did actually bring the uh, Int Demon Goddess Toa on the team. 
because she I is on two Baron actually. of Wits. Yeah, because to take advantage of the fact that if you uh, drop below 50% HP when she comes onto rotation, she gives a 50% mm -hmm. heal. She then also does give a buff to extreme allies, which I don't think I brought at literally any other extreme units on the team. And uh, I think the funny thing is, in the run that I did, I don't think I actually ever got her heal passive off because uh, you did it? Oh, this okay. team is incredibly powerful. Um, and I think the you know mm. the I think the odd time that I did drop down in HP, she just wasn't on rotation, so I would then proceed to use an item. But yeah, this team is very powerful. Obviously, if you're someone who didn't pull the Goku and Vegeta, you don't have access to them as the main leader. But a unit who makes a very good stand-in is, uh, as Blaze mentioned, the Tech Trunks. Because he has the Future, which does cover some of the Vegito Blues, and then Super Types as his sub-lead. Mm -hmm. So you can make a very strong team with him. Um, and yeah, obviously the Vegitos are all pretty crazy. AGL Pycon is on here as well, who we'll talk about a little bit more because he has his own mission. But I did actually find him quite useful in the event. Um, and mm -hmm. so yeah, there's a ton of units here. Obviously, STR Vegito Blue, the LR, uh, doesn't really get talked about much these days because of how crazy good the physical Easy A one is. But of course, <laughs> remember that not only is he a free-to-play option, but he's also a infinite stacker. So he's someone that you can rely on to build up masses of defense. And then of course, both the LR Vegitos are on here: the Tech one and the Int one from the three year. The int one can provide you with that free heal once you get uh, below 50% mm -hmm. HP. Because these are the kind of events where you're going to be able to see most of the transformations from pretty much any of your characters. Because uh, you're not going to have to worry about the turn restriction because the fight goes on for quite some time. Obviously, you're going to get to see the Tech Vegito Blue. And if you do bring STR Gogeta for one of the other stages or just on a just for fun team, you're obviously going to get to see them go up to blue and then get fully built up and they can show just how good they are as well. So Battle of Wits does have a ton of powerful options. I think I would say this is probably the easiest one out of the yeah, starting I seven missions. So definitely a very strong category. And again, if you're somebody who needs to wait to reinforce your box a little bit, especially for the reps of seven mission, the anniversary banners will be the return of Goku and Vegeta. So if you don't manage to pull them in your summons, they'll be in the coin shop. And I think they're probably maybe not necessarily the top of the list for everyone but like very high on the list of units you should prioritize picking up with red coins so that's Absolutely. definitely another one that the anniversary will help you out so next we'll move on to power absorption so you talked about this already a little bit with the booze so let us know a bit more about strats for the power absorption stage right so power absorption stage um as you guys know i think we can all agree the best leader is probably going to be the boo tanks or buhan Mm -hmm. um the moments where you want to kind of try and stack your defense uh it's probably gonna be it's gonna be a little bit difficult but you kind of want to stay in the realm of the first stage two and three because stage two is going to be super saiyan one of goku but goku does not lower your defense when he's super saiyan uh the agl he does lower defense but he doesn't hit as hard but again if you stack your defense in those type of stages uh before you go into super saiyan 3 and the golden zaru uh boot tanks is going to be a-okay uh, but again, you still have to watch out for the Golden Ozaru. Like the Mass Ningen said, mm -hmm. uh, he actually got one shot with 400k of defense, which I'm actually pretty shocked. I've never seen that. Um, but I guess I got very lucky. <laughs> one unit I think you probably would bring um, is actually going to be the Eze AGL Super 17. I think as of right now, because we just got the LR version, right? The tech one. I think I do prefer uh -huh. the AGL a bit more, just because he has that damage reduction, which is like always constant, where the LR version, uh -huh. it's like every three turns right well at the end of the next turn he gets his damage reduction once he gets hit so it's it's a bit yeah. wonky and also you're not gonna have him at rainbow status as you're a big time whale so at 55 percent i think i would choose the easy um agl super 17 but um the strategy is just to put him in the front and have boot tanks just stack up his defense and then once you get the last phase it should be much more easier to beat the event yeah, definitely the AGL Super 17 Rainbow and fully Easy Aid is definitely going to be more effective than the Tech one at 55%. Obviously, if you're on JP, you could bring both, but you'd have to have them on opposite rotations. And realistically, you do want to run at least one rotation with the Bootanks because he is very, very powerful. Um, who did you have your Bootanks linked up with? Because this is another thing that's always good to consider is 
whilst Bootanks is kind of the powerhouse of your main rotations, you do need to have him linked up with someone who's going to help him to shine. So I actually use the STR Super Boo, who I know people meme on him a lot, but honestly, Rainbow full level 10 links and linked up with the Boo. He does greatly raise defense on super attack if you get the, the actual Buhan transformation. So I was finding even at the end of the event, he was actually tanking quite well and once you decide to transform the lr into buhan then aside from legendary power they obviously share the same like the full same link set so who else did you mm -hmm. uh bring in terms of boo units uh well I, uh, my team was all full of boo units but i also brought 17 the agl um how i worked around was that obviously i put 17 in front and then i had Tanks just stack up his defense my second rotation was kind of tricky because I would have him linked up with the um, skinny boo or the fat mo exchange boo, but only after they transform into a super boo, uh, because he has his damage reduction 50%. Mm. So once we get that transformation, then I had him in the same rotation with the tech Majin boo, and then my second rotation was uh, Easy A Super 17 AGL with the boo tanks because they also share three links together. They share Fear and Fate, Fierce Battle, and something else I'm forgetting here. But Fear and Fate is a key link. Um, so I mean, super attacks were pretty consistent. Yeah, that's uh, uh, that's the thing. I uh, I don't have the tech exchange boo, so I think in in long form events is that where he does shine because people again kind of like to meme about him. But once you get up to the super boo uh, phase, he is actually very good. So in a long form event, that's where you are going to see him actually performing pretty well. Um, but a unit that definitely I think uh, people I want to say people slept on it I thought it was a really good idea to use him and then I noticed a couple of other people did as well but the physical mirror uh, who got his Dokkan awakening a little while ago uh, he infinitely stacks his defense he is an android so he does share a few decent links with super 17 so whilst he's not his best link partner uh, you could use them as a rotation together the only thing you have to be careful with with him is he infinitely stacks his defense in his starting form but then once he transforms into the super mirror uh, he only stacks attack and uh, with this event hitting you so hard especially with super attacks in the wrong spot uh, if he transforms really early then unfortunately he will be a bit of a defensive liability later on but if you can get his defense stacked up, I found I found him to be pretty good as well. Android 13 is a bit of a liability because obviously he's generally one of the best link partners for Super 17. But yep. even though transformed, he is basically designed to specifically fight against Goku units. When you get to the full power Super Saiyan 4 Goku, uh, with no item active, rainbow full level 10 links, he was taking anywhere between like 80 and 100k from normal attacks. So... You definitely have to be very careful if you bring him. Same with the AGL Boo Piccolo. He's a really, really good support unit for this team. I did actually bring him in my run um, because right up until you get to the final stage, he does have a built-in chance to dodge. He's providing everybody with that support. I think he has a start of the turn heal as well. Yep. Um, and then basically I just made sure that once I got to tech full power Goku, I floated him off in the third spot. And I think the two times he did come onto rotation, that would be the time when I activated the Whis item just to make sure he was sure, uh, a little bit protected. But yeah, power absorption, as Blaze was saying right near the start, has a ton of healing. So I think I actually did the same as you where I bought two damage reduction items because, you know, as long as you can keep some damage reduction going and not die in one turn, the amount of healing that you're going to get back at the start of the next turn through passives and links because a lot of them have like metamorphosis and things like that yep. you get a ton of healing at the start of each turn which is going to be very useful and of course int cell is on here so you can always use the uh kind of sbr style strategy where once you drop below 30 percent he gives you a full heal and transforms into the super perfect cell but i did find later on into the event like by the time you get to the super saiyan 4 i only have one dupe in mind and he was not particularly great defensively but if you can keep him shielded or away from attacks or with items active he can be an option i have seen him used on teams that have beaten the event as well moving on to giant ape power again i think this mission was quite easy when they first oh, yeah. dropped and then of course within the first like week or so of the event <laughs> being out they dropped the easy a's for the two super saiyan fours so uh, this event I, I would say this mission became definitely one of the easier ones so um i think you've taken the easy a super saiyan fours back into this event as well so how did you find uh this mission and how was your team 
What a difference. That's all I got to say. These <laughs> easy A's are just ludicrous. It's just they do so much damage. And the counter, oh, it is just a chef's kiss. It's just very good. Like, these easy A's are not a joke. Like, it's very hard to make them look bad. Um, but these easy A's definitely made this much, much easier. Um, obviously, you're going to run a double in Gogeta if possible, if you do have the in Gogeta. He's very good. You actually keep him as a floater. Uh, you do also have here, um, I actually redid the run with them, and you can actually bring um, the free-to-play LR Gohan from the Super Battle Road. If uh -huh. you keep him on his, in, in the same rotation with at least one Goku, he has his damage reduction. Even against the Golden Zaro, he will tank pretty well. Um, yep. But he's a very good option, I would say, uh, especially during the last phase because the Goku hits very hard. But definitely the easy A's, you definitely want to bring them. They, they're much more consistent. Their defense is at least always around 200k. Depending where you have them in the dupe system, but if you have them rainbowed, like Goku has more defense than Vegeta, which is really crazy because he's like around 250k of defense. So, really, if you have the easy A's, this is definitely going to be probably the easiest mission to, to complete for mm. the legendary Goku event. Yeah, I think the only issue could be for people who don't have the Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, obviously, you don't have the full category leader. Uh, mm -hmm. The Super Saiyan 4 Broly has a leader skill that is not too bad because i think his is 130 percent but just unfortunately broly himself is not really a great unit for this uh, event especially the int phase i mean even before you get to the int phase his defense is probably not really good enough to hold up um the super saiyan 4 gohan is really really good um very good defensively as long as he's on a team with giant eight power allies and he does have i think it's a 120 lead so you could potentially use him. But there are a lot of other options for this team. So don't worry too much if you don't have the actual set Giant 8 Power leaders. Because as Blaze mentioned, there's the free-to-play uh, Easy A Gohan from Super Battle Road. Post Easy A, he has an all-types leader skill. Which, whilst not as high as some of the category leaders, is still pretty workable. Um, and then, of course, you can see here on the category, even though technically... They are not Super Saiyan 4. It's only shown in their active skill. The new GT, Goku and Vegeta are on the team. And uh, they do have not only GT heroes, so you can bring units like the Gogeta. They do have the uh, family leader skill as their sub lead. So you're able to bring like the Super Saiyan 4 Goku, Super Saiyan 4 Gohan, etc. Um, so there are a couple of different options for units that you can use as a leader. Uh, obviously for Global and JP, I believe at this point, Gogeta has not been back on another banner. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see him return on a banner fairly soon. Obviously he is the best leader and honestly one of the most powerful units on that team uh, outside of like the easy A Super Saiyan 4s. Just because early on in the event, obviously has the extra attack and defense, is super effective against all types. And then once you've taken a bunch of hits, you have the active skill. Now, whilst you can't really use the active skill to help out with lowering Goku's attack and defense, because uh, by the time you get to the point of using it, you can't really do that to him. But it does give you a nice little uh, attack buff. And so he is able to do very solid damage and has the 50% counter chance. Although bear in mind, of course, this is probably the right team to mention this because there are so many units on this team that can counter super attacks. Uh, part of the super attack counter mechanic, if you read the way it's written on the card, is that the unit dodges the super attack and then counters. So in the final stage, dodge is disabled. It means that countering super attacks is disabled as well. So just be aware if you weren't or sure of that already you cannot counter super attacks in the final stage against full power super saiyan 4 goku either so yeah very good um, point so yeah it's definitely something to bear in mind so moving on to space traveling warriors this is another one where obviously the main leader is bojack who for global has not returned on a banner uh, for jp he was on the videl banner which i know had people mixed reactions because some people weren't super hyped just because it was videl but obviously as a card she's ridiculously good and it was the first return of bojack so you might have the potential to have picked him up on uh that banner when he returned but this one definitely has a lot of options available so what was your uh team build for this one like um i was very straightforward i did bring double bojack uh mm -hmm. but if you don't have bojack you can, you can definitely bring cooler cooler is still very good especially yep. in this event here this defensively is not i mean he does he could take double figures but he'd be very careful of course but i mean his guaranteed crits are ridiculous they actually make you beat the event much quicker 
Um, mm -hmm. But you can also bring as well um, the free to play freeze as well, which I did bring in mine um, because you can put him in slot one or slot three. Most of the time I did put him in slot three um, because, you know, he's very good in slot three as well with his passive. All right, so another unit that you could use is going to be the easy A physical Vegeta. He's very good. He does stack defense as well. Um, again, you have a lot of good options for space traveling warriors. So uh, if you don't have the Bojack, in my opinion, you can still use Cooler. Also, another good unit is the free-to-play Frieza, the int one. He is just aging like fine wine. He has mm. that guard ability, a support type unit. So really, you have a lot of good options for, for sorry, space traveling warriors. How yep. about you, Ningen? Yeah, I, I did use the double Bojack leads as well, but I did bring Cooler on the team. I ran a rotation of the, um, I think the Int Freezer and then Cooler. Um, and then I think I might have used LR Freezer as like a third slot float. Because like you said, his passive is most effective when he's in either slot one or slot three. And, um, you know, he's, it's arguable that he is one of the best free to play cards, uh, you know, He's very, very good defensively, even in these harder events. Not like, you know, the best tank in the game, but he holds his own very, very well. Um, LR Bojack is a unit that I feel was underrated for quite some time. And the release of the Dokon Fest Bojack kind of gave him a new lease of life. Because I did run a rotation of one of the Bojacks transformed and then the LR Bojack. Um, a good thing about the LR Bojack is he's much better defensively the lower your health is. So as we've discussed various points in this uh, guide, the it's very often that you can take a super attack from the Goku and take quite a lot of damage. So going into the next turn, being on slightly lower health, the Bojack is going to be very, very good defensively. And then obviously this category has units like the LR Jiren, who we already talked about. Uh, LR Turles is on here um who as i have him at 55 percent and in terms of his attack he's incredibly impressive uh his defense is solid but not like top tier i was definitely finding once you get nearer to the end of the event that he's not quite as good defensively as some of the other options and i think he's probably slightly limited as well by the fact that his best linking partner is the agl turles who just in this kind of event just gets crushed when you get later on into the event but I mean, they, there are some common links among some of the Saiyans. So obviously the physical Vegeta, you could run him alongside him, but they don't really share a ton of links. And obviously with LR Teles, you want to be getting 24 key with him to maximize his uh, passive and all that sort of thing. But there's a lot of good units on this team. This definitely has a lot of um, variation and the cooler as Blaze was saying, is a really, really good stand-in leader because you can quite easily run Cooler as the leader and then Bojack as a friend because those categories have a huge amount of crossover. And uh, on both versions now, Cooler has been back on quite a lot of banners, so you are a lot more likely to have him uh, available to you. Moving on to Connected Hope. So this is another one that I saw people uh, complaining about, although I think it's mainly because... Uh, PyCon, of course, had only recently come out on Global. A lot of people had already decided to skip that Dual Dokon Fest before it even came out. Um, and so then, of course, this mission comes out and you ideally need to have PyCon. Although, if I remember rightly, I think you've done it as well. I have done a run of this uh, mission not using the actual Connected Hopes leader at all so what was your uh, experience with this stage honestly it was wasn't that bad um i actually did this run twice i did one with items and one without items uh just to show people that it's not that bad Cause i think this is where a lot of people did struggle because mm. either pycon could get you killed at the last phase or you don't have pycon right um i actually used the lead of double super saiyan 3 goku the int okay. one okay um, just because he's a very good unit, um, he, because of his uh, leader skill, Super Saiyan 3 and the other world warriors, you could bring Gogeta, you could bring Gotenks, uh, obviously you can bring Pycon as well if you do have him as well. And also you want him to transform as soon as possible because if, as long as you give him three ores, he will have that 33% chance to dodge, which is of course very, very uh -huh. good. Uh, and also the last phase, um, it was very int heavy, so the last phase being a tech type really wasn't that difficult, especially with Gotenks. I think Gotenks is a very good card to have um, because his defense is very, very good, um, I would say. But if not, if you don't have any characters, you can definitely go with Super Saiyan. Yep. I think me and you had the, the exact same team, but <laughs> I did mine with the Int uh, Gohan, and you did yours with the physical yep. Gohan, future Gohan. Right, so it's very, I would say it's kind of tricky though, but I mean, you can still definitely get it done 
with the Super Saiyan Goku. As long as you get him to transform very early, that's the key to like being the event. To make him transform very very early yeah because yeah i did a super saiyans run using the double namek gokus uh like you said he's not the best defensively early on but once you get that transformation he does become a defensive stacking unit so he can build up and become very powerful um and yeah a lot of these units that uh, fit into the super saiyan category that have super saiyan transformations along the way so you almost kind of skip over them when you look at the list because their base art is not super saiyan but yeah the in future gohan is very good uh the gotenks i honestly think gotenks is a very underappreciated unit that has aged really well because when that dual dokon fest came out everybody kind of unanimously uh memed on the tech boo as not being very good but gotenks is actually really really good because he greatly raises defense on super attack when you're in the super saiyan form which of course you will be from turn three onwards you have that chance to do additionals built into his passive so if you have any dupes or skill orbs you have the potential to get three super attacks in one turn all of which greatly raise his defense so at that point he's just taking double digit damage from any of the phases including like the int goku and then of course in the final stage he mm -hmm. does have type advantage so what i did with i think i've used him on at least two of the different teams uh, you just transform him up to super Same. saiyan 3 when you get to the int goku um and then yeah not for the first few turns after transforming to super saiyan 3 he gets additional super attacks and he is hitting some crazy numbers considering mine only has two dupes so he was dealing a ton of damage uh tanking really well and then by the time you get to the tech phase that part of his passive has run out to get the guaranteed additionals but then of course you have type advantage so he's actually a really really good unit for this event and i would recommend if you have him basically any of the teams that you can fit him on to do these missions i would absolutely recommend bringing him but yeah i did use the pycon uh i would say the same thing we were kind of saying in the uh power absorption when it comes to boo piccolo he can be very very good all throughout the run as long as you can get the orbs for him because he obviously has the chance to dodge he's providing support and of course getting the uh super effective against all types if you do have a unit on rotation for him to get his partner super you just need to be very careful when you get to the final stage because you can't dodge anymore um and you have type disadvantage so you really need to uh be using an item at that point if he's on the rotation but also this uh, category does have the uh physical lr gogeta from the three year so just like the vegeto on battle of wits you can see their transformation get the full heal and then, of course, Physical Gogeta is a very powerful unit. I think I actually ended up using the rotation of him with the Namek Goku. Using Namek Goku as the tank. And then for Gogeta just coming in and dealing the big damage. So, yeah, this this one definitely possible if you don't have Pycon. Uh, like Blaze was saying, you can use the Int Goku or you can use the Namek Goku. And there's a very strong roster of units that can fit into those teams so for the final category we have corroded body and mind this is the one that's kind of in the same boat as the pycon one because you needed to have janemba who not everybody summoned for and honestly i think this one is possibly one of the hardest outside of reps of universe 7 only because of the limitations of the category so i know you also pulled janemba but what are your thoughts on the team building for this one uh, it's very tricky. I would say it's definitely easier on JP because of the same name update, so you could bring both the easy agent mm -hmm. numbers. Um, but on global, if you don't have tech number, I'm not too sure if you can actually get it done. Because I've tried with the in Goku Black. I. It's pretty difficult. Um, yeah, so I've seen screenshots oh, of it done without Janemba on global, but like... It's tricky because oh, okay. it depends a lot on your box. So if you use the exactly. Int Goku Black as a leader, you obviously are restricted to using Time Traveler's units who are in Corroded Body and Mind. Um, so mm -hmm. it basically requires you to have like both of the Marseillean units from the Heroes Banner. Um, and then you also kind of need to have the Int LR Rosé because I actually don't have him. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do a video doing a build using the double Goku Black leads. But the only units I had that were Time Travelers and also Corroded Body and Mind, I would have had to have brought the STR LR uh, Zamasu Goku from the anniversary. And he is just not, like, he oh. is not a unit that is at the level of being <laughs> able to compete in this event. So whilst technically it is possible to do it without Janemba, I do think it is incredibly difficult. So, 
Um, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, again, though, it's like we said with Reps of Universe 7, with the whole waiting for the anniversary. At some point, Janemba will be back on a better banner. And it's not like you have mm-hmm. to do the uh, all the missions straight away. Because <laughs> I think the reason why this one is so hard, outside, even if you have the Janemba, just when you look at the units who are mm-hmm. available... Um, as we said at the beginning, units that stack defense or have damage reduction are the key. And outside of like the Janembers, the big main units on this team, you've got Marseille. Obviously, your boy here, yep. very, MVP. very happy mm-hmm. that you know this is an event where mm-hmm. he gets to shine because his EZA made him an infinite stacking unit. Um, straight off the jump on turn one, he's hitting like three million attack stat and. Uh, building up his defense every single turn so he was really really good and uh, the physical Debora as well i actually overlooked him when i did my first run um but he is a unit that infinitely stacks defense uh and in goku black as well like again he's another unit that gets memed on quite a lot but in this event you are going to get to see him transform he is going to be stacking defense for multiple turns I think the only downside to him is, of course, he only stacks defense, so he doesn't really do a lot of damage, uh, especially once you get towards the end of the event. But he's obviously a solid defensive option. So I do think this one is... The difficulty level of this one is just revolved around the fact that there really only are specific units that are good in this event. And if you're missing a couple of them, it becomes very difficult to field a full team that is actually capable of... uh, of beating it but obviously with the more hero right. stuff that we keep seeing they've basically shown us with the units here that are on the category any of the future units that they bring out that are the time breaker mask characters so obviously in the recent episodes of the heroes anime we've seen a uh, time breaker rose goku black uh in heroes already mm-hmm. there exists like time breaker super saiyan 4 broly They've actually teased, oh, I don't think he's been in the anime yet, but there's also a Time Breaker Super 17. So obviously in the future, this category is only going to grow with more units that come out. And of course, more banners that he's on, you're going to be more likely to be able to pick up a copy of Janemba. So definitely difficult based on the limitations. But again, it's something that you can definitely build up to in the future. Also is very hard because it also depends on RNG just a little bit. The reason why is because, as you guys know, Rosé, his transformation is an HP requirement. So if you get supered early on and you, you will take a lot of damage, it comes very difficult to transform with Rosé. And then you'll probably have to use an item where you don't want to because you want to kind of save it for the last phase. But that's where the RNG just comes a little, a little bit of factor. You have to make sure you don't get supered at the wrong place at the wrong time for um, Goku Black. Yeah. That's my only point for the end. Yeah, unfortunately, just like with uh, any of these difficult events like Super Battle Road, anything like that, RNG definitely plays a role. And if you take, like, I mean, it's it sounds kind of annoying, but like, if you start off a run and you take a super attack in the wrong spot on like the first turn, <laughs> And then you get to like (laughs) Super Saiyan Goku and you take another super attack in Mm -hmm. the wrong slot. It's almost a case of you probably just want to quit and restart because like I said at the beginning, Mm -hmm. for me, ideally, the strategy I was finding that was the most successful for the runs was not using an item until I at least got to the great eight phase because you don't want to get right to the very end. Um, and be starting off full power Goku with no items and then all of a sudden he starts dodging your super attacks and then if you're not running a team like power absorption with a ton of built-in healing it's just only a matter of time until he wears down your HP but but there you go so we wanted to cover each of the categories for the missions just to give you guys a little bit of an idea on some units that you can use and some teams that we used uh i would assume in the future just like they did with the original lge they will add more category missions in the future so keep an eye out on the channel and uh, we will probably do another guide for those missions once they come out as well and uh, yeah let us know down below if you were successful in beating any or all of the missions let us know your team builds in the comments because that can always help out other people as well and uh, yeah anything else you want to add here before we head off i just want to say guys do not rush there's no rush to getting these missions done uh just really take your time and just like the mass thing you said it will get easier in the future especially for rush universe 7 once we get more units but again also good luck to you guys as well and hopefully you, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And yeah, so that is going to be it from us over here on 59 Gaming. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button and that bell to stay notified when we update any content, gacha or otherwise. And we will see you guys all again soon. Peace out. Peace.